Let's see if I can actually get this firewall out of here this time. Because yesterday, as you saw, I was struggling. And it seems like every time I put the damn thing in here, it gets harder to get out. And I don't know why. I can't take it out this way. It's a conundrum. It's so close, right there. Oh, oh, come on now, come on now. I'm gonna bend it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, so this goes down. This is like one of those games you find on a table. Like a brain teaser twister game. That you can figure out. You know, like the two nails that are hooked together. That's what this is. Right there. Right there. Right there. Come on. It's going to bend it. I'm cutting this back right now. I'm never going through that again. Never again. I actually think from here, from this inside lip down, is probably gonna get cut off because I think that's where I'm gonna attach my tow board to right here. So I think this is all going to get removed anyways. And that's really, that and this lip that I bent over is what's hitting the frame rail. Which is causing me all my stress. I need my hammer. And it's Saturday. And I don't want to be stressed. So I got... I got a pretty cool video coming up of an adventure that Allie and I went on that I'm excited to tell you guys about. Because you guys all know, hopefully at this point you do, that I really I enjoy, I'm very passionate about hot rod history. I actually want to add a section on my website about just hot rodding in Massachusetts in general. So it's something I want to do moving forwards in the future. So, but anyways, it's something I want to share with you guys coming up in the next week or so. Okay, so what I was doing where I left off was I was going to trim this back just a touch. See my marks. Right here, where this kind of flared out a little. So I want to straighten that up a little bit. And uh, get this thing fitted back in the car and then see kind of where I'm at. I'll grab my bib so I don't burn a hole in my shirt. Uh, where are my overall? Oh, hold on. Are you in here? Put you over here. See how that works. Alright. See if this goes in a little easier this time. It should. I don't know if it will, but it should. Well, 
it looks like it's still going to be a pain in the butt to get out. But I'd say if it did go in. It went in easier. <laughs> I actually think on the bottom, on that flanger I cut off, I think I actually got to cut it just a touch shorter because it's, it's really rubbing on the frame. It's hitting on the frame and it's kind of pushing it a little funny. But that looks good. And now the driver, so the passenger side. All right, so I'm gonna mark it from the back. Push them together and mark it on the back and then cut them. So I have an exact line. That's how I should have done it before, I suppose. But like I said, I'm really just, I'm trying to creep up on this to try to get these points so they lined up. Let's get this measured and cut once and for all. So that's what I should have done originally, I guess, was cut one side and then put the other side up there and scribe to it. But again, as I said, I was kind of just really trying to creep up onto it more or less. So what I need to do is I need to pull the driver's side out. And then I'm going to uh, make a few little modifications to the bottom so I can get it in and out easier. And then see where I go from there. There we go. Marks. All right, let's see where that gets me. So I'm going to grab a magnet and stick a magnet on the bell housing to keep the metal back. Okay, so I need to cut this back just a touch right there. I just don't know if I can get my cut up. Yeah, I can. I think right now, before I go any further, I'm going to remove these lower edges, these lower like shelf areas. Alright, so we're inside the car now. What I think I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to leave this top ledge where it kind of comes down. And I'm going to try to work with it and use that as my tow board, where my tow board is going to sit. I need to remove this and then underneath here. And then this over here I'm gonna cut this back about three-eighths of an inch and give myself a little bit more clearance on top of the on top of the uh, bell housing and then bring this down just a little wider probably past this insert so I'm gonna make a quick mark like I said just kind of bring it up about another three-eighths of an inch try to make it match the driver's side and then I'm going to remove the pieces on the driver's side the same as on the passenger side I'm going to keep this factory hole for the throttle 
the auto cable. I'm going to retain that if I can. I should be able to. This seems to be like it's going to be in a pretty good spot. I'm going to fill these three holes and then remove the pieces of the areas I said. I'm going to make this mark now and then uh, put it up on the table and get rid of that. And then, actually then I'm going to take these pieces down and sandblast them. Clean up the metal and then get them uh, tacked in place. top of the hole to line it up in the hole of the firewall. I still gotta still gotta hit it with a little sand in this to get it just a touch smaller so it'll fit in there. Naturally, it rolled all the way under my table and disappeared. I honest to God have no idea where that thing just went. 
Uh. All right, so I finally found this. See if it fits now. Just take it, stick it to a magnet. Try to get it to fit in. Still gotta, still gotta come down just a touch. I'm get these edges cleaned up with a file real quick. If I have a small file. Because this was an old hole, you know. I want to make sure that there's no rust in it. And I can actually see a little bit, so... Alright, so now... I'm going to weld this piece in. Everybody, it's Mike uh, up here in Mass, Middleborough, Mass, as you guys all know, working on the coop. And I is a couple days later, and I'm trying to wrap up the video for the firewall. Sorry, I'm trying to move a few things, and I wanted to kind of just catch you guys up to speed as to where I'm at on the firewall. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you probably saw the last update. I believe it was maybe Sunday, Saturday or Sunday I was out in the garage. I think Sunday morning. And I want to show you where I'm at, where I left off. Where I left off in the video, as you just saw, was I was working on filling the old heater holes that were on the passenger side of the firewall. So... I was able to finish those up that afternoon. That was on Saturday afternoon. So I had three holes in the firewall. One here that was just on this bead. I filled that one. And then there were, uh, nope, there was another one down here. So you had this top hole, the bottom hole, and then there was a hole somewhere in this region here it came up and then it came up this bend yeah I can actually I think I can feel it I must have did a pretty good job because I can't really see it <laughs> so I filled those three holes on the firewall I got both sides set where they needed to be I had said before I made up my made my measurements center mark on the firewall and I had scribed a mark on the top of the bell housing and I really can't get in here I, I want to get down here a little bit better so I didn't weld this down here where the panels meet one another down here uh, because the motors kind of in the way and I can't really clean it up with the with my little uh, grinder sand and disc so you can see I kind of got it to a point where it's good enough for now till I can get it up on the table and finish it up kind of clean it off a little bit better finish weld it just a little bit better uh, I had just have some self tappers every other hole going down the top of the firewall just to keep it in place for now what this is going to allow me to do now is it is going to allow me to work on the inside of the car and my next step 
working on the inside of the next the next step inside the car is working on working on my pedal assembly and then also working on my tow board and basically well I say the tow board but it's going to be my pedal assembly which is obviously going to be in front of my transmission cross member Trying to move this light over here a little better. So I'm gonna have my pedal assembly obviously down here, and I'm gonna have to create a bell crank somewhere in this area here on the front of my transmission cross member that is gonna work. Hold on, let me finish this. This is just sitting in here. I'm gonna need to create some linkage for the clutch rod or the clutch arm in order to actuate the clutch lever or the clutch rod so my plans are I'm going to create a flat floor at the height of the top of the frame rail for the pedal area for the feet area when you're going to be sitting in the car and what I'm going to do is the floor is going to be flat until the front edge of the seat. At that point, at the front edge of the seat, the floor is going to dip down. So we're going to have a flat floor here. I'll obviously have my transmission tunnel. A tunnel here where I can I have room for my shifter linkage. My shifter is obviously going to be here. My floor is going to be flat all the way up until the front edge of the seat. It's going to slope down and then we're, I'm going to build the seat here in this area the reason I want the floor flat in the front is so you I don't have very much room down here between the frame rail and the shifter linkage and this is the same issue that I had with my 30 coupe your feet end up being really trapped down here in the foot well and I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna create a flat floor as flat as I can and then like I said till I get to the front edge of the seat floors are gonna dive down and they're gonna go down to the bottom of the frame rail. I'll have my transmission tunnel here which will essentially be underneath the seat. It's going to then bump back up behind the seat and then it's going to go into the trunk area. I'll have a bulkhead, my fuel tank and all that stuff. So so that's the next step but I wanted to kind of catch you guys up to speed and let you know where I was at on the firewall. I'm happy with the way it came out. I really like the look of it. It's a really nice clean look. It looks like it could have been something done, you know, back in the day for the factory. I left this hole here for the throttle linkage. I don't know if I'll be able to use that or not, but I left it for the time being. I can always fill it in the future if I decide I need to. The car originally at some point when George Ryan built it, I believe, had the master cylinder up on the firewall. I thought about reusing that in that location to kind of put it back to where it was. However, I decided to go with an F1 pedal assembly, which is here. And obviously this assembly, this assembly is located underneath the floor. So that will kind of put all my brake and clutch mechanical parts and everything down beneath the floor pan, the floorboards, which is a lot cleaner and it's it, it's what I want to do so uh, like I had said I'm gonna keep things certain things the way they were and then kinda change up a few things because I have the time and I have the parts available to me to to kinda use some of the parts that maybe he didn't have access to back in the day I, I don't know but in any event that's the plan I just want to get you guys like I said caught up to speed on the firewall I hope you guys got a good laugh my struggles the other day uh, certainly don't don't hesitate laughing uh, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put the video up if truthfully if I didn't think it was kind of comical to begin with um, I did I kind of held back a little bit uh, uh, vocally obviously you can't put up some of the stuff on YouTube so uh, I've 
yeah, I just kind of, I kind of held back a little, a little bit. Uh, it was a pretty frustrating process. It was a long, slow process, but in the end of the day, I'm happy with the end result. I think it looks great. It's exactly what I want it to look like. And like I said, I have a few more holes on the top portion of the firewall to fill. I'll do that moving forwards. It's not really going to slow me down at this point. Yeah, just keep making progress, keep moving forward. So I just want to th say thanks to everybody. Sorry again, my, my camera died. Uh, it certainly isn't how I want to do things. I like, I like the, the videos where I have the step-by-step -step process. But again, like I said, I apologize. And it's just, I thought I had the camera charged. And sometimes the, the continuous nights of recording at the end of the night it's you know sometimes 10 11 midnight one o'clock in the morning by the time i'm going up to bed and sometimes i just forget to pl plug the camera in and i need it the next day and that's when i run into issues so i'm sure you all understand and i appreciate that so hope everybody's good everybody if you have a chance get out in the garage get out there work on your cars hopefully i'm motivating some people to get out and do some things and pick up some wrenches if you haven't picked any up in a while uh, i got some really cool things coming up uh, if you uh, if you guys have seen if you guys have seen any of my Facebook and Instagram posts, I was able to meet uh, the owner's son of a really cool old hot rod and got a lot of hot rod history from him. Just learning about his dad, his early days of hot rodding, and the car he built that was kind of his prized possession. Allie and I have talked about doing our own 2021 challenge. <laughs> Not competing against Matt and Mike because Matt, as we all know, is on a different level. Uh, but Allie and I, well, I told Allie that I wanted to do a 2020 challenge, or 2021 challenge, rather, just for myself. And because I told her what Matt had done, Matt and Mike had done last year, and I certainly love following along just like I'm sure you guys did. That being said, not many people know this, but the way I got my 34 coupe in 2020 was hustling and buying and selling parts. And most people wouldn't believe it, but I made some pretty big leaps in a real short amount of time last year, uh, even with COVID. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a backstory on how I got the coupe. I was going to kind of do a separate video I um, mean, maybe, who knows, maybe I'll throw this in the beginning of our 2021 challenge for Allie and I, but I'll tell you a quick story. So I had a 1986 Chevy C10 pickup that I bought for $4,000. It was a Southern truck. I put a little bit of money into it, and I had a friend who really liked C10 pickups and he purchased the truck off me but what we ended up doing was i worked out a deal he gave me a 32 ford chassis a real original 32 frame and a complete rolling chassis on wide fives juice brakes drop front axle completely 100 percent rebuilt banjo spring wishbones brake lines master cylinders drums wheels everything you name it drive shaft Everything 100% literally bolted in a car and drive down the street. It was done. Truckload of parts, tires, wheels, you name it. I worked out a deal for cash and the parts, for the hot rod parts. At that time, I had a 32 Roadster title that I had picked up in my travels at one point. I took that 32 title and the 32 chassis and I put it up online for sale. So I still had the cash that I had sold the truck for, however I just took the frame and put the frame up for sale with a title for $4,500. This gentleman reached out to me, his name was Scott, and he's about an hour away, and said I have 1986 or 88, 1988 Toyota pickup, four wheel drive, uh, Texas truck, beautiful truck, I traded straight up and I knew those trucks were bringing good money so I said yeah I'll come out and take a look at the truck I went out and take a look at the truck thing was beautiful he took it apart to paint it never painted it so it was kind of in pieces the grill was out headlights taillights stuff like that some of the interior was apart all right we ended up working out a deal straight up trade for the pickup for the 32 frame and the title so I kept my cash I kept all the other parts 
I just traded the frame and the title with a K member in it. I took the pickup, I cleaned it up, I put $700 worth of wheels on used tires, brand new wheels, used tires, and brand new lug nuts. Had the tires mounted. I was into it for $700. So I was into that truck for whatever that frame cost me, I think about $1,500 bucks, plus the title, the wheels and tires. I traded that truck for a beautiful 1987 Chevy no, it was a GMC Jimmy. So I went from the 88 Toyota pickup, which I'll post the picture of that, to the GMC Jimmy. I'll post a picture of that now. I sold the GMC Jimmy for $10,000 cash. That $10,000 plus some of the other money that I had already set aside is how I bought my 34 coupe. I'm not going to tell you what I paid for the 34 coupe but it was more than ten thousand dollars. So that's how I ended up with my 34 coupe. So just flipping and it was three moves. It was the frame and title to the Toyota pickup to the Jimmy to the 34 coupe. So it's no different than what Matt's doing. I just kind of went off and went off in a different direction when I took the Toyota pickup and the GMC Jimmy in trade. Not typically something I would do, but I knew that I was going to be up no matter what. And I was hoping I'd be able to flip it and sell it and make a couple of bucks. And that's what happened. Took me a little longer than I'd hoped. But that being said, I was able to make enough money to buy the 34 Coupe. So Allie and I are going to do our own 2021 challenge and it's inspired by Mike and Matt at Iron Trap Garage. I've been doing what Matt does for the last five years, six years, and it's really hard to keep track of it. I often try to, but it's it's almost impossible unless you unless you write every single penny down and that's what they're doing. So it's inspired me to do the same. So what Allie and I are gonna do can be a little bit different than what Mike and Matt are doing. We're going to kind of do what they did last year. We're going to go and buy a part. We're going to keep the $50 starting, you know, the, the budget at $50 for a part. I'm not allowed to take anything that I have out of my garage because I'll blow Allie out of the water if I do that. So we're going to keep it even. We're going to start at a $50 part or multiple up to $50. And then we're going to sell it and we're going to go from there. I don't have a dollar amount goal. I don't have a ultimate I want a X, Y, Z goal. It's just going to be the person who makes the most money wins. And I have a feeling I know what's going to happen. People are going to side with Allie. I want to help Allie give me a good whooping. But I say bring it on. I'm pretty good at doing this. And I've, I've made... I've made a lot of uh, strides, let's just say, in the hot rodding world as far as the parts I've been able to dig up. So uh, that being said, this is going to be the kickoff to Allie and Mai's 2021 challenge. This is going to lead into next week's video, which will be her and I talking about it. And we'll keep you guys updated moving forwards on, uh, on the updates and what, how we're doing and what we're doing and the parts we're selling. So we'll definitely try to keep you guys uh up to date the best we can or the best I can because I'm the guy that does all the videos go Allie's goal is she wants to so we have a vintage Scotty camper trailer it's a 1959 and 58 59s a real early one and it's beautiful it, we just need to finish it so uh, we've had it almost a year now it's under a cover and it's something that her and I were gonna do together so her goal is to make enough money to finish the Scotty camper. So we need hubcaps, wheels, tires, and then we're going to do the full inside. The outside's good. We've got to replace the glass, the weather strip, and things like that. Uh, but as far as like a full restoration, it does not need a full restoration. It's in really good shape. So uh, that's Allie's goal is to make enough money on a 2021 challenge to finish our Scotty camper. Uh, I, again, like I had said, don't really have a goal. It's to make the most money I could possibly make. 
And who knows, maybe buy another hot rod. Because Lord knows, four just isn't enough. See you soon.